Hi, uh, I'm going to demonstrate CI's VRS simulator. VRS stands for Variable Range Simulator, and it's used to test the customer's LRF, or Laser Range Finder. Um, the VRS is what we call an electro-optical controller that is, it is controlled through a software package on a Windows-based platform. So, in, okay, so the VRS in this, in, in this experiment this, con this box or controller is configured to support two different wavelengths. We can see here in the front that we have a 106 uh, uh, wavelength and we have a 1.57. Uh, and it's, it's, the VRS is configurable to support up to three different wavelengths in, in the unit so we could have a triple wavelength uh, controller. Now let's take a look at the back side. And here we see the back side of the uh, VRS. The VRS uh, this is where we have the input-output of the, the unit. Um, this cable is the communications cable and it can be either RS-232 or USB and it, can, it is controlled, uh, we use it to control, remotely control, uh, the controller through the Windows software uh, application. We also need two types, we can have also two types of input. One is either electrical or optical. The, elect the optical input uh, or laser is uh, has a is a wide band uh, photodiode. I mean, if, so it can accept either uh, anywhere from around 800 nanometers to about 1.6 nanometers, or even tailor custom tailored to customer specific requirements. So that you need only one kind of trigger uh, to uh, start the uh, timing mechanism of the unit. Uh, or in, in other cases you want to use an electronic t trigger if you don't have any kind of laser and you just want to see that the system is working or your receiver is working or whatever we can control the unit by some sort of electronic pulses or electronic signals on the output you have here since this is a dual wavelength uh, VRS you have two fiber optic outputs one is a 106 uh, wavelength uh, laser output and one is a one. 0.57 in this case. As I said before, that we can have up to three. So here we have see we can see here that this is the third output. Okay, a little bit about the theory of uh, operation of the VRS. Uh, it's using this uh, very simple principle that distance is equal to velocity times time. So um, based on the desired uh, range, uh, the output pulse is delayed from the input trigger pulse. So the input trigger, as I said, could be either optical or the laser input from the LRF or uh, electronically. And then and based on some sort of uh, differential time uh, that, we're, uh, that is delayed, the output is, is, it comes out. Um, the experiment set up here, since we don't have a, a range finder, we're going to use some sort of uh, mechanism to generate uh, some optical pulses. And what I'm going to show you is the different components that are going to be the input to the, uh, to the VRS and then the output. We're going to use the following pieces of equipment. So we need to generate some sort of optical pulse. So we're going to use, we have here this little unit here, which is a pulse generator or laser pulse generator. This laser pulse generator, once we turn it on, is going to be used here the output of it is going to go into this cable, this fiber optic cable, and it's going to go in, into the optical input of the VRS. Once the VRS, we're going to then go to the computer and set up the desired range that we want to use here. In this case, we can set the range from anywhere from uh, 100 meters to about 40, 40 kilometers. And there are different parameters on the system I'm going to show later. And once we set the trigger and it starts triggering, the output pulse, we're going to take the output pulses from the 106 and it's going to come into this photodiode. This photodiode is going to generate uh, an electrical signal. It's going to go into the scope. So we're going to have the scope here. Right now everything is turned off and uh, the scope is we're going, to, we're going to see the input trigger and we're going to see the, the, the delayed output pulse. Just to show that everything is working I'm going to use a little power meter to show demonstrate that the pulse generator is working. I'm going to turn on the power supply to the board. This is already, the board is operating in some sort of a fixed frequency. I'm going to connect this power meter just to see, and we're going to look at the laser uh, 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 power meter to see 
that we're getting any kind of reading. So once we look at it, we see that now you're getting something in the range of 6.6 .6 microwatts, okay, per pulse. So this means that we're getting some sort of reading, okay? See now, so now we know that we're getting a pulse. If we take a look, in this case, we see that this is the input trigger. Wait, the input trigger, if I take it out, we see this is the input trigger, because it's always triggering. Once I put it into the photodiode, we see that this is the delay, or this is the range that we're simulating. Now, of course, not, uh, uh, the, the VRS is calibrated to take any kind of losses in, in fiber optic cables, so all the timing is calibrated at CI. Now, if we want to change the range, in this case, we're, t we're, we're sampling something in the range of 3,500 meters, we could just change it to a different uh, range. Oh, man. I think this is, this is, okay, let's go to 4,000. Click the send button. And now, if we take a look here, you see that the delay has changed, increased. So it was before it was over here. So let me just demonstrate, take a look. Why don't you just look at the scope? Now it's set to 4,000, let me set it back to 3,500, and you can see that it's going back. We can go down to 1,000 and, and click. Okay, so we see that we can change, we can change the uh, delay from the input to the output. If we're going to just look a little bit at the little Windows app application that we wrote to control the, the VRS. Um, as you can see uh, from the main window, there are a lot of different things we can do with this little uh, with this application, but the first thing we're going to do is be able to to change basically three parameters. We can do multiple pulses, multiple, so we can we can we can we can uh, demonstrate uh, multiple pulses one after the other to for your maybe gating of your LRF and other applications. Essentially, each pulse has three three parameters that you can change. Either one is the distance. The other is the pulse width, or the output pulse width we're talking about, and the expected energy of the pulse that's coming out of the VRS. So here we see that, as, as before, we can change the, the distance. We can click, the, once we set the distance, we, the desired range we want to test, we click on the send button, and all this is sent to the controller, and, the, and we can see that from the, on, the, on the scope, or in real life, you'll see that the distance has changed. Okay, I'm going to repeat the measurement so that we can see that while I, as I change the parameters on the Windows application, change basically the range that I want to test, that the output delay of the, for the input trigger it will be changing. Right now, since the, my, the, the, the pulse, the output pulse is not connected to the photodiode, we see only at the end the input trigger of the uh, laser pulse. Once I connect it to the photodiode, now you can see that there is some. Oops, you can see some. Uh, okay, let me just change that trigger a little bit. Okay, should be more stable. Okay. So in this case, uh, the scope is showing a delay which is equivalent to 2,222 meters. If I change it to, let's double it to 4,444, it should double the d in distance. I click on the send button, and we see that it's basically double. So we can we know that this system is working. That's how we do our in-house calibration, and uh, that's it.